Hi guys, my name is Gavin Hewitts and today I'm going to be quickly breaking down the four things I typically look for when I'm analyzing a client's abandoned cart or abandoned checkout flow. I will be breaking this video into four different sections. I hope you find this useful. Once again, I'm the founder of Top of the Inbox. We are a marketing agency that specializes in both email as well as SMS marketing. If you have any questions or you need any assistance with your email marketing, you know who to call. Link down in the bio. So without further ado, guys, let's jump into it. Step number one, the first thing I like to look for is the filters and just making sure the filters are set up properly as well as the triggers within an abandoned cart and an abandoned checkout. Now, one thing I'd really like to note and distinguish is the difference between an abandoned cart and an abandoned checkout. This flow here is an abandoned checkout flow, very similar to an abandoned cart, but the trigger is slightly different. So right here, we actually have the metric being checkout started right? So they've already added the item to their cart and they've already started the checkout process, which triggers this flow. If this was an abandoned cart flow, it would be slightly different. The trigger would be added item to cart, right? That's an important distinction to make. Now, keep in mind, I know the title of this video said abandoned cart. A lot of the advice I'm going to give you here is very interchangeable between the abandoned cart and the abandoned checkout. So feel free to take any of these recommendations or things to look for and apply them to your abandoned cart flow as well. So obviously we make sure our triggers are set up properly and we name our flow correctly, right? Now, pushing down, we look at our flow filters. I always like to check the filters and the first one we need to make sure we have is this one here, which is what someone has or has not done, placed order zero times since starting this flow. And what this means is it prevents anybody who has placed an order while being in this flow from receiving their emails. And the reason we do that is because it prevents us from communicating to them, saying something like, hey, your item's still in their cart after they've made a purchase, which would be very confusing from a user's perspective. They're gonna be like, what the hell? I've already placed my order. What do you mean? That doesn't make any sense. So just adding that filter at the top makes sure that the uh, communication is on point. Now, keep in mind, if you have an abandoned cart flow set up as well, right? So let's say you have an abandoned checkout and an abandoned cart flow set up, both two different triggers. And there really is a place for those two flows because essentially you're talking to two, you're talking to the same person just at different stages within their decision-making process. Let's say you had an abandoned cart set up. You would also want to have another filter that says both placed order zero times at starting this flow and, and not or, and, uh, started checkout zero times since starting this flow. Because the moment they start checkout, while being in the abandoned cart flow, they will also be in this flow. So there's no point in sending them two different emails at the same time. I hope that makes sense. If not, just shoot a message down in the comments. Number two filter that I like to set up is has not been in this flow in the last 30 days. Now you can tailor and, and, and tweak this to whatever degree you want. Personally, we like to keep it at around 30 days just because it prevents that over communication and sending too many emails to the same person over a short period of time. And we find that it reduces list attrition, both in terms of unsubscribe rates, as well as spam complaint rates. The last thing you want is somebody to be adding an item to their car, placing an order three days later, adding another item to their car, having to get the same emails in the same flow over and over and over again. Just put yourself in their shoes. It can get quite annoying and quite repetitive. That is number one, making sure our filters are set up properly. And keep in mind, flow filters are applied before every single email, right? So somebody still may be in this whole flow, or they might have like received this email here, this one here, placed an order. They'll still be in the flow, but the flow filters will be applied before each email goes out, meaning it will skip them, as you can see right there. Cool guys, so that is number one. Number two, what I like to do for number two is I like to make sure our conditional splits are set up really nicely. So as you can see here, we have our first conditional split, which is the checkout started is less than $500 in the last hour. Now, the reason we set up this split is because we have found that people who have a higher value abandoned cart or abandoned checkout uh, process essentially, take longer to decide as opposed to somebody who has a shorter process. So what does that mean? In this case, if the individual has started checkout and the value is less than $500, according to the data, we see that as somebody who doesn't need as much time as somebody who has placed or has started checkout 
with more than $500 in value. Because when you think about it, a higher ticket purchase typically takes more time to decide. And a lower ticket purchase can typically mean somebody's, if they're waiting, can typically mean, oh, they're not actually hesitant on spending the money, they're actually shopping for the best price. And sending them these reminder emails will get you in before competitors do. However, with higher ticket items, in this case over $500, it can take longer to make that decision, which is why we delay our emails more so to ensure that uh, we hit them at the right time when it comes to that abandoned checkout or abandoned cart email. On top of that, so you can see we have our uh, $500. So if they've spent, if the checkout is less than $500, they go down this side, whereby they will either get a 30 minute or a one hour delay. And if it's more, they get a two hour or four hour delay. Currently doing, uh, we you wanna compare the data as well. The second conditional split that we're actually doing is a split test. And we're split testing between a 30 minute delay and a one hour delay. And when it comes to your flows, I highly recommend implementing split tests pretty much everywhere and anywhere that you can. Super useful and well worth taking a look into. Now, moving through this flow, we go ahead and we, uh, we have our other conditional splits, which is SMS. We like to implement SMS where we possibly can. Obviously this client doesn't have a whole lot of traffic coming through, which does keep in mind, guys, when you are testing, you do need to have a lot of uh, significant data to make educated decisions when it comes to these split tests. And I'll show you what I mean. So currently looking at this flow, we have a split test between 30 minutes and one hour, right? And on the books, we have a click rate of 6%, for the 30 minute delay, open rate of 51%, place order rate 3.2%. And then for the one hour delay, we have a 49% open rate, place order rate of 6.6% .6 and a click rate of 3%. So obviously <clears throat> looking at that, if we were to choose the winner by placed order rate, we'd go for, for the 6.6%, .6 the one hour delay. But seeing as though we really don't have a lot of significant data, we only have 61 people in the last 30 days going through this flow versus 63, it's really hard for us to make that educated decision. So we'd actually have to extrapolate that data over a longer period of time, more so than 30 days, perhaps run this test for 60, 90 days, and then make our decision. Because one click when it comes to like just 60 people can really swing and adjust the data in pretty drastic ways. So just make sure you have enough data to make those educated decisions. So guys, that is number two. Also, one other point I'd like to note is you have a conditional split, and this is the placed order uh, split. And this is basically filtering out and tailoring your communication according to people who have purchased with your brand before and according to those who have not. And as you can see here, we have the conditional split set up so that it's placed order at least once over all time. And if it's a yes, we send them different reminder emails to those if it's a no. So why do we do that? And what's the reason behind it? The reason we do that is because for those who have never purchased with this store before, we like to offer an incentive, 5%, 10% off, just to encourage that first purchase. We have found that the first purchase is always the hardest to get when it comes to generating a sale. And we like to encourage that through the use of a coupon. However, if someone has made multiple purchases before, we don't see the need to repeatedly send them coupons just to consistently encourage that purchase. A, because they already trust us, and B, it can result in people potentially abusing the abandoned cart process that we have set up here, right? If you think about it from a consumer perspective, if I know that I'm gonna get a coupon if I just wait two days uh, after adding an item to my cart, I'll just wait two days, even if I was gonna buy anyway. So it's just a matter of making sure that those coupons are appropriate and that you filter them out accordingly. Cool guys, so that is number two. Number three, I hope I uh, got the order right here. Number three is ensuring that the time delays are set up properly. So as we touched on before, we have our 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, four hours. Moving down, you'll notice that we have the one day time delays. And we like to make sure that the one day is not set just to one day, but it's also tailored according to the recipient's local time zone. Now, you can decide what time is the best time to send your email. We've decided it's 11 a.m. recipient's local time zone based on both user data. That's where you typically go for, go for user data. Or if you don't have significant user data to make that decision, just go for an educated guess. By that, I mean, if you're in the trades field, right? If you're selling to, let's say mechanics, 
that's your niche. Put yourself in a mechanic's shoe and think about like where and when would a mechanic be opening an email? In my mind, and I might be wrong, I'm not an expert, but I would think, okay, if a mechanic's in the store all day working on, working on cars, typically they're not gonna be checking their emails till at the end of the day. So perhaps four to 5 p.m. So I'd use that, that, that informative analysis and I would go ahead and set the time delays to four to 5 p.m. as that's when I would expect to see the highest levels of open rates. Keep in mind, you can test this. So split test all these things. We have found that delaying it to this time has resulted in the best result, uh, has resulted, apologies, in the best open rates. And uh, it's just one day. Also keep in mind, you can also tailor it according to Monday or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You can also take data from campaigns and implement that into the flows as well, just to kind of ensure that you have a really broad spectrum idea of, of when those best open rates are, are coming up. Uh, finally, we have just the, I believe this is the last one, uh, if not, little bonus one for you, personalization. As you can see here, we have hey first name, hey first name. Ensure that you're adding those things into the messages. Personalization is key. Personalization consistently outperforms where, uh, where it's not included. And you'll notice in each one of these emails, uh, for the sake of discretion, I'm not gonna open this client's emails, but we leverage and use first name as well as dynamic product code so we feature the item that the individual has left behind in their cart in the email when i say cart i also mean checkout now one other thing i'd really like to touch on this is like a little bonus point is that if you are not using shopify and you're creating an abandoned cart flow within clavio or an abandoned checkout flow within clavio it's really important that you select the right provider or the right pre-built that clavio has and you can do this by just going here on the left hand side and you go Shopify, and if you've integrated with WooCommerce, it'll come up with WooCommerce suggestions. If you've integrated with Magento, it'll come up with Magento suggestions. It's really important that you select that one, even if you just wanna grab that dynamic product link within the email and implement it into your existing designs. So what does that actually look like? I'll just do this here. We'll call this Browse, browse Abandon ID. Uh, yep, we'll just call this Test, and this is what it's gonna look like. So we'll create the flow, and this is how you typically grab that dynamic link, that dynamic product image, and put it into your existing emails. And this goes for any provider. Just keep in mind that code that is used in Klaviyo to display those images varies according to the integration that you have. So it's just very important uh, to be mindful of that. I've actually seen some people who will have a Magento integration, but just be going online, grabbing a Shopify code, checking that into their emails, and the image doesn't display. And it's like, well, why is it? It's because you have a Shopify code, not a Magento one. So if you were to go in and you were uh, using the uh, Shopify pre-built, you'd go here, you'd go edit into that email, and you would go ahead and you would take this product here. See this little thing here? Grab that, save it as like a saved block, and then you grab that block, and then in your other email, you just pretend this is a new email, You'd grab this, grab the saved, check it in, and then boom, there you go. Cool guys, I hope you found that useful. Um, any questions, once again, shoot me or us a message. The email is just down below. If you do need any help with your email marketing, you know who to call. Uh, link to the website, Calendly, booking, all that jazz, just down below. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Any questions, fire away. Thank you, bye.